Canary. This time we added a canary to detect buffer overflows. Can you find a way to retrieve the flag from this program located in this folder? All right, so I'm already in this folder. And we'll see the standard set group ID executable. If we look at vuln.c, it's got it's a little bit more than uh, we've had before. So it's going to ask us for the length of the entry. And it's going to read that. And it's going to compare that to the canary. So a canary is something that you put on the stack to detect a buffer overflow. You'll see that this one is a variable here. Normally this is done by the compiler. And this canary is being read out of a file with this read canary method. And we want to get to this display flag method. So we have a 32 byte buffer, which is going to be followed by four bytes of canary. Okay, so in order to simplify this, I've uh, put together a little Python program. And what this is going to do is I'm just going to loop through all the printable characters. I'm going to say for 33 characters, I'm going to do 32 A's followed by this character. I'm going to pipe it into Vuln, and I'm going to see if it says OK, right? So it says OK, where's the flag? if it doesn't detect the stack smashing. So hopefully these uh, strings will all be printable. We'll be able to work our way through that. So if we say Python canary py, so if we go back, we'll see that some of them cause the string to break. Like if I put in an extra backslash, that causes the string to break, or that dash. But I see that the letter E was OK. So the letter E is OK. And so what I can do here is I can say, all right, um, I have an E. And now I'm going to look at 34 characters. I can look through all of those. It looks like this X is OK. So now I'm going to have 35 characters. I'm going to send EX and loop through all the letters. And now if we go back, all right, so this time, oh, it looks like a semicolon. So we have a non uh, alphanumeric, but we have a semicolon. That's okay. That's still within the list of things I was looking for. I'll change this to 36. And now we see a Y. All right, so EX semicolon Y is the canary. So that's 30 six characters plus now we're going to need to think about what we want after that so i'm going to look at that mem compare i'll scroll through there's display flag read canary here's a vuln um, all right, so I just passed that mem compare. So that mem compare was looking 16 bytes below the frame pointer. So we need 16 bytes below the frame pointer. And then there's an extra push of the old frame pointer. So I need 20 bytes. And then I should see my return address. So I need to go 20 more. Let's check and make sure that's what I wanted. So my mem compare was 16, and then I should have an EVP above that, so I should have 20 more bytes. So let's put that here. Thank you. 
Let's see what that does. All right, so we do see the, okay, now where's the flag? Then it dumps core every time. Okay. Okay, so it's dumping the query. I think I'm already overwriting the return address. Let's think about that again. Oh yeah, because we have these four bytes here already. So we really only need 16 here. And so we have the 32 plus four is 36 plus the 16 is 52. So that should get us there. Now we need to look for what we want to change the return address to. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. So it looks like we have a position independent executable. And my position independent executable is why these are all zeros. And so this is gonna be an offset. And we don't really even know what this byte here is gonna be. So if I put that 07ED over the return address, it's probably gonna fail a bit of the time. Okay, so Okay, so let's go ahead. We have the 32, 36, 52. Let's change this to a 54. And now I need to add um, ED and 07. Okay, and I don't actually want this X anymore because I've already gotten all of those. All right, so we've got the 54, so we have 32 A's, 36, 52, 53, 54. And let's go ahead and run this again. Oh, it looks like I messed up, so string isn't, yeah, I forgot to end the string here. Okay, and I, oh, there we go. So we're seeing the flag because we didn't know that last nibble, that last half byte. So when I ran this a bunch of times, every once in a while we'd get it right. And then we have here that canaries must be random. So canaries are usually random. They're inserted automatically by compilers now. The one place you might have a, st a static canary is where you have like a forking server where it splits the process to handle a web request and it's all within that single method. But here's our flag. We should be able to put that in and get ourselves some points. <laughs>